Good day everyone. My name is Rosalito C. Del Mundo. You can call me Sir Joel for short. Before we start our discussion today, let us bow our heads for the prayer. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord, as we all say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Father, we thank you for everyone gathered here now. We thank you that you know each one of us by name and have caused us to walk with you. We say that we are dependent on you and our trust is in you completely. As we surrender ourselves with adoration, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you lavish upon each one of us. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Lord, we thank you for everyone who are present today. We pray that you would give us great inspiration as we share what you have placed in our hearts. We pray that you would fill us with courage and give us your peace. We pray that you will keep us safe and spare us from the threat of the virus. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, good day everyone. How many are you today? Well, all are present. It seems that you are all ready to listen and learn our lesson today. If that is so, then let us now begin. At first, let us have this activity. In this activity, you are asked to complete the simple shape pattern. Well, in this activity, you need to observe a correct pattern or order. Or in short, you need to become a good observer for you to get a correct answer. Now, let us answer this activity. Your answer in number one should be a yellow circle, red, yellow, and red circle. If this is your answer, then very good. Number two, we have violet, green, violet, green squares. Number three, we have blue, yellow, yellow, blue triangles. And lastly, blue, red, red, blue diamonds. Well, how many of you here get it correct? Congratulations. Okay. Based on our activity one, shape patterns occur when a group of shapes are repeated over and over again. These patterns follow a certain sequence or order of shapes that is then repeated at least two times. The shape can be simple shapes like circles or squares or other objects such as arrows, flowers, moons, and stars. Our next activity is almost the same with activity one. You need to be a good observer to look for its pattern. In this activity, I'll be giving you three to five minutes to answer these two problems to find its missing term. If you are ready, you may now start answering. To answer this problem, first look for a pattern to identify the next term. We can write the alphabet here for us to check the pattern. How? Let's do it. A, C, F, J, blank. What is the next term after J? Now, let us write the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, then K, L, M, 
N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Now, from the given A, C, F, J, we have here A, and then C, then F, J. What do you think is our pattern? If you look at the two letters, A and C, there is one letter between the two, A and C. Between letters C and F, there are two letters between, and these are D and E. Between F and J, there are three letters. We have G, H, and I. With this kind of pattern in this sequence and in this sequence, at first, we have one letter here, followed by two letters, and then three letters. Therefore, there is a possibility that after having these three letters between F and J, there must be four letters between J and a certain letter. So we can now eliminate K, L, M, N, because we have one, two, three, four letters. Therefore, our answer in this problem should be what? Letter O. So we can uh, write here O. And O here is the correct answer. Now, if for instance, your teacher asks you to give the next term after O. So after eliminating four letters, we can eliminate five. So we can eliminate P1, Q2, R3, S4, and T5. Therefore, the next letter is letter U. Okay? So after O, we can write U. So this is our answer on this problem. In this given, the first and the last letters in the alphabet were given. That is letter A being the first letter and letter Z being the last letter. Followed by the second letter of the alphabet B and second to the last letter Y. So there's a chance that the next term is letter C. And after C, the next term is letter X. Why? Let us check. Again, write the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Again, looking at our problem, the first term is letter A. And letter A is followed by letter Z. One is coming from the first letter, while the other is from the last letter. After the last letter, it was followed by the second letter of the alphabet, and that is letter B. Then after B is the second to the last letter Y. Okay? So therefore, with this pattern, what do you think is the next term after Y? So it should be this letter C. 
And as what I have said ago, there's a chance that the answer here is C. And this time, we proved that the answer is really letter C. And after C, if for instance, your teacher asks, what is the next term after C? Your answer is what? Letter X. So you can write X here. And then another after X is letter D. After D should be letter W. So these are the next four terms in this sequence A, Z, B, Y. Okay? So how can we connect the two activities that we have done a while ago to our topic today? Any idea? Well, the activities are related to our topic today because, first, we will generate patterns. Second, differentiate a series from a sequence. And, as an individual, you should develop a value of being a keen observer. And lastly, it is expected that each one of you will participate in all discussions actively. One of the objectives is to differentiate a series from a sequence. How can we differentiate the two? Have you heard this word sequence and series before? If yes, can you share something about it? Before we differentiate a series and a sequence, let us answer this activity first. Find the next three terms. Number one, 25, 17, 9, blank, blank, blank. Number two, 4, 5, 9, 14, blank, blank, blank. To answer number one, we need to look for a pattern, so as in number two. In number one, the pattern is subtract A from the previous term to get the next term. Since the first term in number one is 25, to get the next term, we need to subtract A for us to have 17. And then from 17, subtract 8 in order to get 9. So from 9, subtract 8, what is the next term after 9? Well, the answer is 1. Very good. So the answer is 1. Now, the question is 1 minus 8. What is 1 minus 8? Yes, it is Negative 7, correct. So negative 7. And then to get the next term, it is negative 7 minus 8. What is negative 7 minus 8? Well done. It is negative 15. Very good. So negative 15. Therefore, the next three terms of the numbers 25, 17, and 9 are what? 1, negative 7, and negative 15. Next, number 2, 4, 5, 9, 14, blank, blank, blank. To answer this problem, we need to add two consecutive terms in order to get the next term. How? This is what I am saying. 4 plus 5, you can get 9. Okay? So 4 plus 5, the answer is 9. After adding these two, add the next two terms, 5 and 9, to get 14. So that is 5 plus 9 to get 14. After this, add what? 9 and 14. What is 9 plus 14? Of course, the answer is 23. Very good. Next to this is what? What do you think is the next term after 23? Add 14 and 23 to get this term. What is 14 plus 23? Yes, it is 37. 
and last we have 23 plus 37 to get this term what is 23 plus 37 yes it is 60 very good so the next three terms of the numbers 4 5 9 and 14 are what 23 37 and 60. If you notice, we've used numbers in our last two problems. These are succession of numbers in a specific order, which is called a sequence. What is a sequence, therefore? A sequence is a succession of numbers in a specific order. Each number in a sequence is called a term. The terms are formed according to some fixed rule or property. They are arranged as the first term, the second term, the third term, and so on. Example, we have 1, 3, 5, 7. 1, 3, 5, 7 is what? An example of a sequence. Each number is called a term, meaning 1, is a term being the first term, three being the second term, five the third term, seven the fourth term, and so on if there is another number given. With this sequence, we can apply a certain rule. What is our rule? We can add two on the previous term for s to get the next term. So that is, you can get 3 by adding 2 to 1. You can get 5 by adding 2 to 3. And you can get 7 by adding 2 to 5. Okay? So again, 1, 3, 5, 7 here, separated by commas. Okay, is an example of a sequence. Next, we have a sequence with a definite number of terms is a finite sequence. In a finite sequence, the first and the last terms are clearly identified. Going back to the sequence 1, 3, 5, 7. This is an example of a finite sequence. The first term is identified so here is our first term and the last term is also identified which of course seven so again one three five seven here is an example of a finite sequence a sequence with no definite number of terms is an infinite sequence now, to make 1, 3, 5, 7 an infinite sequence, 1, 3, 5, 7. To make this sequence an infinite sequence, we need to add this symbol, ellipsis. This three dots indicates that there are more numbers and follow or follows after this number 1357. Applying the rule, na yung sabi natin kanina, ay adding 2 on the previous term. Okay? In here, the first term is identified, but the last term is not. Because we do not know what is the last term of this sequence. Because of this symbol, ellipsis. Next, we have a sequence is a function whose domain is the set of natural numbers or a subset of consecutive positive integers. On our next slide, I'll give you an example or probably two examples regarding this. Example 1, use the functional relation f of n equals 2n minus 3 where n is a natural number, to write an infinite sequence. 
at first let us take n or let's use n be equal to 1 and then from the given relation f of n equals 2n minus 3 we will substitute n using 1 so now we have f of 1 equals 2 times 1 minus 3. So again, in this case, we replace this n be what? Equivalent to 1. Because we're here, uh, in here, it is said that n is a natural number. Okay? Now, to continue, what is 2 times 1? Of course, the answer is 2. And then, copy minus 3. What is 2 minus 3? So the answer is negative 1. Meaning to say, our f of, uh, f of 1 in the relation f of n equals 2n minus 3 is equal to negative 1. If we continue at n equals 2, from the function f of n equals 2n minus 3, we have now f of 2 equals 2 times 2 minus 3. Again, we replace n using 2. And 2 times 2 here is 4. Then copy minus 3. And it so happened that 4 minus 3 is 1. In short, our f of 2 here is equal to 1. And then another is at n equals 3. Replace n using 3. So it is f of 3 equals 2 times 3 minus 3. What is 2 times 3? Of course, the answer is 6. And then copy minus 3. Then 6 minus 3, the answer is 3. Meaning, our f of 3 here is 3. Therefore, our given sequence is what? Negative 1, 1, 3, and then ellipsis. Since it is an infinite sequence. Okay? This is it. Example number 2. Using the consecutive positive integers n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, write the first five terms of the sequence defined by g of n equals n minus 1 over n. Well, in this example, it is clearly identified that n is to be replaced using 1 to 5. Unlike in example number one, since it is an infinite sequence, we've only used numbers one to three in replace or in lieu with our variable n. Now, let us answer. Using the function g of n equals n minus one over n. At n equals one, okay, at n equals one, g of 1 is 1 minus 1 over 1. So happen that 1 over 1 here is 1. So we have now 1 minus 1 and the answer is 0. So our g of 1 here is 0. Next, at n equals 2, g of 2 is equivalent to 2 minus 1 over 2. We have here this denominator 2. And since the denominator of 2 here is 1, so 2 divided by 1 is 2 times 2, it is 4. And 2 divided by 2 is 1 times 1 is 1. Then what is 4 minus 1? The answer is 3. And then copy the denominator 2. Okay? Next, at n equals 2, 
at 3, I mean, at n equals 3, we have g of, g of 3 be equal to what? 3 minus 1 over 3. Then copy the denominator 3 and multiply it by 3 to get 9. And then minus 3 divided by 3 is 1 times 1 is 1. What is 9 minus 1? The answer is 8. And then copy the denominator 3. So it is 8 over 3. Okay? So our first three terms here now is what? 0. And then 3 halves. Followed by 8 thirds. To continue, at n equals 4, Okay, so for a while, so at n equals 4, our g of 4 is 4 minus 1 over 4. Copy the denominator 4 and then multiply it by 4 to get 16. Then 4 divided by 4 is 1 times 1 is 1. And that is, what, 15 over 4. So that is our g of 4. So g of 4 is 15 over 4. In here, we have 15 over 4. And then lastly, at n equals 5, okay, so again, replace n using 5. So at n equals 5, our g of 5 is 5 minus 1 over 5. Copy the denominator 5 and multiply it by 5 to get 25. Minus what? Minus 1. Why? 5 divided by 5 is 1 times the numerator 1 is 1. What is 25 minus 1? The answer is 24. Then copy the denominator 5. Meaning our fifth term is 24 over 5. Again, going back, we're asked to get the first five terms of the sequence g of n equals n minus 1 over n. So our answer is what? 0, 3 over 2, 8 over 3, 15 over 4, and 24 over 5. So here is our answer. Okay? This is it. A while ago, we held the sequence 25, 17, 9, 1, negative 7, negative 15. If we are going to replace the comma symbol by a plus sign like this, 25 plus 17 plus 9 plus 1 plus negative 7 plus negative 15. This is now an example of the what we call series. Why? The sum is an example of a series. A series is the indicated sum of the terms of a sequence. A series can be denoted by S sub n where n refers to the number of terms. If a sequence is finite, its corresponding series is a finite series. Going back on this series, how many terms do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we can write this as S sub 6, okay? And then, what is the sum? 25 plus 17, what is the answer? So 25 plus 17, the answer is 12 carry 1, 42. And then 42 plus 9, so 42 plus 9, the answer is 51. And then 51 plus 1, okay, 51 plus 1, the answer is 52. 
And then 52 plus negative 7 or 52 minus 7, the answer is 12 minus 7. So we have your 5 and then 45. And then 45 minus 15. So the answer is what? Of course, 0, 30. So our sum of this series, 25, 17, 9, 1, negative 7, negative 15, after adding it, is what? Positive 30. Okay? Next, example number 2. We have 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus ellipsis plus S sub 7. If you notice, we have this three symbol, uh, this symbol ellipsis, the three dots. But after it, after the three dots, we have this plus seven, meaning to say up to the seventh term only. So now we have five plus seven plus nine plus what? What do you think is the next term after nine? We can get the next term by adding what? Two on the previous term. You can get seven by adding two to five, then nine by adding two to seven. So what is nine plus two? We have here 11. Then after 11, it is 13. And then after 13, it is 15. So how many terms do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need one more term. So plus 17 for us to have this seventh term. So what is the sum of these seven terms? Five plus seven, the answer is 12. 12 plus nine, the answer is what? 21. And then 21 plus 11, the answer is 32. And then 13 plus 32, the answer is 45. And then 45 plus 15, the answer is 10, carry 1, it is 60. And then 17 plus 60, the answer is 77. Our S sub 7, therefore, here is 77. So this is the correct answer here. Gets? Gets. Very good. Now, let's put it in a problem solving. Miguel has been elected president of the table tennis club. His first job is to schedule the tournaments for the month of May. The tournaments are played every Friday afternoon. If the first Friday in May is May 2, find the dates of all the tournaments. We know that Fridays are seven days apart. First Friday is two, isn't it? Why? Because in the given, our first Friday is May 2. So first Friday, first Friday is what? May 2. And since Fridays are seven days apart, 2 plus 7, next Friday is 9. And then 9 plus 7, we have what? 16. And then 16 plus 7, we have 23. And 23 plus 7, the answer is 30. Meaning to say, the dates of the tournaments are what? May 2, May 9, May 16, May 23, and May 30. So we have May 2, 9, 16, 23, and 30. Okay? This is it. At this point, try to answer this portion. Let us consider this as your written work today. Meaning, everybody will answer these exercises. This will help us know to determine whether we need to have another examples or not. I think 10 minutes is enough.
to answer all of this. Enjoy answering and good luck. Okay, again, how can we differentiate a series from a sequence? When we say series, it is the indicated sum of the terms of a sequence. It can be denoted by S sub N, where N refers to the number of terms. While a sequence is a succession of numbers in a specific order, each number in a sequence is called a term. The terms are formed according to some fixed rule or property. They are arranged as the first term, the second term, the third term, and so on. And again, very basic concept regarding series and sequence. A sequence uses commas while a series uses the plus sign. So that's it. Now it's your time to answer this slide. This portion will be your assessment on how you understand our discussion today. I hope that you can get at least 80% of the total points. Suppose you have problems or queries now you can review our lesson by watching this on my YouTube channel, Sir Joel, or you can send me a message through Messenger. If you're done on this, just send me a picture of your answer for me to check your work. You may now start answering and good luck. Aside from the evaluation, you need to answer this portion honestly. This will measure on how you understand our lesson well. So that's it. Thank you. I hope you learned a lot today. See you next time. Bye.